Hello everyone, this is Daniel aka B-Bell Dan and welcome to another mask making tutorial video. This video is more than just a tutorial video. This video is also an experiment and a proof in concept to see if I can actually do what it is that I am trying to do. And what I am trying to do is I'm trying to make a mask similar to the latex mask that I also have on my video where it's organic, it fits the entire head, and it's form fitting to my to my head, to my face, so it's not doesn't look out of proportion, you know, too big or anything like that or too small. But unlike the Cinnabite mask, I'm going to try to make it where I don't have to have basically I sculpt it. I don't have to have a negative mold. I don't have to worry about messing, you know, with a clay mock-up first and then cast, you know, a negative mold. And then from that negative mold, pour latex. I want it to where I could just take a head form, sculpt the mask on top of that. Once it's dry, boom, it is done. Okay, and that is the what I'm gonna try to do today. So we're gonna see if that works. What I'm going to try it out of though, and I've seen lots of people use this, but I've never, but they've only used it to sculpt details on masks. And usually those masks, they tend to be kind of um, non-organic, uh, you know, uh, armor pieces and things like that, or weapons and things, you know, uh, maybe some organics, but it's like usually horns or what have you. And that is this stuff right here. This is foam clay. So enough talking, let's go ahead and see what happens okay so here it is you see me I am taking the head mold that I made and used to make the Cinnabite mask and I'm covering it with uh, saran wrap the idea with the saran wrap was is I don't know how this foam was going to uh, interact with the plaster so I was intending to use this as kind of a separator between the two for easy removal um, as you can see the the saran wrap doesn't really stick very well to it, but I continue to try to move on to make it work. So now I take the foam clay out, and if you've never used it before, this almost has kind of like the consistency of um, almost like melted uh, marshmallow, partially melted, melted marshmallow. I just take it and I knead it up just like you would with clay, and uh, I'm trying to put it on some more saran wrap first, but the first thing that I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to kind of make a, a framework, so to say, to build the mask on. And as you can see, the saran wrap does the job like what you intended to. Is you know it it this stuff has a hard time trying to stick to the saran wrap. Um, hence why I'm trying to make this framework that I'm going to be building the mask on. So I'm trying to fill it out even more, build up the layers, trying to apply more. And around this time, I think is when I started having some issues of where the clay was actually starting to kind of slough off to a certain degree. And I kind of did a no-no, as you see right here, I removed the, uh, the saran wrap and started applying this clay directly to the mold or to the head head uh, cast and it sticks very well to the head cast so I'm applying the layer and as you can see I'm dipping my hands in water every now and then because water will allow this to kind of help smooth this together now to smooth it out I am using some saran wrap and I'm stretching it over areas of the of the clay and I am trying to use pressure to try to get this as smoothed out as possible. This doesn't work well in smoothing like with uh, water-based clay so this was probably the best way that I can come up with to try to get as smooth as it look as possible and in many ways it did actually kind of work. Um, I'm sure there's probably other ways but I'm just right now experimenting at this point, so I don't know of any tips or tricks that other people have used, but this works very well for me. So I go over to the entire head, using the pressure, using the saran wrap, uh, maybe with a little bit of water to kind of smooth it out. Now here, this is the only part of the mask that I am using, that I'm not using the foam clay for, and these are going to be uh, metal pieces, little metal, um, uh, you know plates that is 
blocking the mouth and blocking the eyes on this particular character here. Um, the character, this particular Cenobite inspired character, um, his eyes and his mouth, he's permanently blind and permanently mute to the world around him, to these plates that are bolted into him. And because this is foam clay, this foam sticks very well to it. The foam clay sticks well to itself and sticks very well well to the foam so I'm able to kind of push this in and adhere it to a certain degree I'm just putting in just maybe a couple little tacks of fresh clay because at this point of time some of the mask is already starting to uh, dry up now here I am now going in and working on some of those details I'm taking a bit more of that clay I'm rolling it up and now I am getting at the details the brows the um, you know the wrinkles the the smirks I mean every little detail to try to get some more character out of this or a bit of the facial expression the idea is that this character here has you know has experienced a lot of pain through his transformation and that pain is constantly permanently you know stuck in his or what you can see of his face so I'm right now working on the eyebrows and just like I did before with I'm using water to kind of help smooth in this fresh foam uh, layer of foam into the old layer of foam. But like I said, I'm just pushing through and I'm just trying to work on as many of the details as possible. Like I said, getting the wrinkles, the, the creases, the, you know, the furrows of his folds of his skin as he is wincing in, in the constant agony that he is experiencing through these plates and stuff that is welded or bolted into his skin and I'm also taking this time going through and trying to you know thicken out any spots of his of the mask that might be a little bit too thin so just like with clay I'm now using a variety of different carving tools uh, clay working tools to try to go through and deepen some of the details you know deepen some of the you know the the wrinkles and the the you know even putting in some scarring and if you remember from the um, you know from the chain master you know he had this these magical spells that was etched into his skin that allowed him to control chain well this is a character that was created by that chain master and the chain master etched some of these same spells these same magical words or unholy words into his flesh so he can remove have absolute control over them and for the most part this all works except one thing though that it's a little that you might see a little bit later on is that as this foam as it um, as it starts to cure it actually somewhat it shrinks but it also expands at the same time it's kind of weird so some of those details that I put in they eventually disappear. That's why now that it's when it's dry, I'm going through with this little Dremel tool here, this little rotary tool here, and I'm trying to not only smooth out some of the high areas, but I'm also trying to carve in some of the details that end up disappearing through the process of while this foam was curing. Now I'm going through, and also there were a couple of high spots that also showed up as that foam expanded, so I'm trying to go through now and smooth out some of these areas. But now I'm at the point to where I'm trying to take it and I know at this point in time or probably long before some of y'all were probably already screaming at your screen saying why did you take off that saran wrap? Well you got to keep that saran wrap on. That saran wrap will actually help you remove this because this clay really stuck to this plaster of Paris. Now there's probably another way that I could have used like maybe if I give a good coat of paint on my plaster to seal in all those pores it would probably be a better job but as you can see with me trying to take this off I completely tore up the mask. It was no good anymore so I have to start all over from scratch so I take this throw it away start again but this time I go ahead and I completely saran wrap and I'm going to try to work on 
keeping it on. I don't know the reason why, but for some reason the second time, maybe because I put in a lot thicker of the saran wrap and stretched it a little bit more, I was able to actually get that clay to stick much better to it this time. And so I continue to move on. Um, most of this process is already the process that I've seen before, so no sense in really repeating it. Just this time I try to learn from my mistakes and I try to do as much of the smoothing as possible in this level. And I'm also out of the white clay, so I take by some black clay, but I try to mix in some of the white. And I'm using these already pre-cut plates, metal plates, as a way to kind of make sure that I have both covered up the entire mouth and eye areas, but also I don't cover, waste any more of this foam as I need to. So at this point, I went over the whole thing. Um, I'm trying a slightly different approach here into where I went ahead and I did the basic first. So I just have just the, just kind of just a basic little cover shell, you might probably say. And so now I'm removing it. And once again, with that saran wrap, it comes off a little bit easier. As you can probably see though, there are some areas that I tear and there are also some areas that were just a bit too thin, but that's not really that big of a deal because I just go in and I just use some more foam clay to patch it up as you'll see in just a few minutes. But all in all, I'm a little bit happier with the way that it turned out this time. It comes right off. I didn't really completely tear up the mask, uh, which is a plus. I'm able to remove the saran wrap as well. Um, as you can see, there are some areas where it did tear, but at this point in time, at this level, I can repair this, so I'm not terribly displeased. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm now super gluing on the foam plates that you see that I already had prepared. Now I will admit, I tried using the foam clay to make the bolts that adhere the plate to the flesh. Um, it didn't really turn out the way if I wanted to. If, what I should have done is just go ahead and either you know, make some rods out of the foam clay, let that cure, and then cut it up into the bolts themselves. But, oh well, live and learn. But I keep on pressing on, so I go ahead and I glue this all in. I'm using some plastic bags inside it. And so here I went ahead and I put on some extra details. Once again, I've already done all this before, so no sense just showing you this on camera again. But here is the mask with most of all the details. Just like with the last one, I go in with the Dremel tool to try to kind of clean up some of the details. I try to round off or flatten the bolts that hold the metal plate to his, to his skull. And I also go in with this to try to smooth out some of the uh, areas of where the newer foam meets with the older foam because it was, you know, as long as they're within a couple of hours of each other they blend very well but if you have something that's brand new again something that's brand old they don't blend very well so now i'm at this point to where i i'm painting it i've already given this a complete base coat of a primer and so now i am using some special paint that is designed to be used on foam i've watered it down just a little bit and put it into my airbrush and now i'm just going through and i'm giving it a base coat of white and I do several coats of this to try to get it, you know, completely coated, um, you know, where you don't see any of the black. in with some of the additional colors I think at this point I'm putting on my second coat and now here I am now trying to add in some a little bit of darker details so I have a bit of a grayish color with a little bit of a hint of, of purple and I'm going through and I'm trying to you know really you know make those highlights make highlights by making some of the darker areas a lot 
you know, the deeper areas a lot darker, therefore bringing out a lot of the the lighter areas a lot more. So I'm just really trying to get this, and I'm going through right now, and I'm actually painting a little bit with that gray on the metal plates, just to kind of get that started with me metalizing these metal plates here. And this turns out real well. I'm actually very happy with the way this turned out. And now I'm going through and I'm hand painting first with a bit of straight up silver paint. And once again, this is paint that is designed specifically to be used on foam for foam cosplays. And surprise, I was actually really surprised about how metallic this stuff actually really turns out. I, I don't think it does, the, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily make you believe that it's fully metallic, but it does a real good job. And then I go in with some extra dark colors and you know, with a little bit of red and a little bit of orange and a little bit of brown to try and get some rust colors to show that, you know, this, this entire, um, you know, these metal plates have been rusting away as they've been on his face to show you how long that they've been on. So I'm going through all the different colors and trying to get it, you know, show you the, the newer. Now I'm going through and I'm doing the most important part is showing the blood, you know, painting in to show that yes, these bolts are in his face and he is bleeding out of several spots of his body of where not only the bolts are inserted into the body, but also where the plates are cutting into his flesh and into the meat. So I'm just going through and just trying to paint up as much blood. And here is the finished mask, as you can see right here. I think it's pretty good. It's, you know, I've learned a really quite a bit, a lot from this. And I think that if I ever attempted this again, the second one is going to be a heck of a lot better. All right, everybody, and as you can see, this is the final result. Uh, now, let's go ahead and go through it real quick just to kind of, uh, for me to explain. As you see, it does work. I can put it on my face, and it does fit. However, though, there are a couple of, um, you know, um, issues with it, but these are hopefully learning issues. So if I decide to do this again, it would be a lot better. Uh, the next time I make it, I'm going to have to probably make it a little bit bigger or even just try to keep it on my head form in hopes that when this cures, it doesn't shrink as much. Um, and I'm going to have to try to get the, the consistency pretty thick. So this is foam. Now, this is not a mask that is designed for you to wear um, multiple times, or at least this particular one here, the way it turned out, it's not designed to be worn multiple times. It's not designed to do for a lot of movement. Um, I mean, if you're wanting a mask that you can move around and you can wear multiple times, uh, even one that feels a little bit comfortable, a little bit more comfortable than this, um, you may want to go with the latex mask for right now. Uh, but if you're needing to just make a mask real quick that you're only going to use for a short period of time, um, or for short periods of time, not take on and off a whole lot, um, you know, and you don't have necessarily the time or the ability or the money or the funds to try to, you know, do clay, two-part molds and all that other type of stuff. This actually works, and that's what this is. This is a proof in concept to see whether this actually works, and as you can see, it does. So real quick, I just want to go ahead and go through the good things and the bad things about the good things are is that it's real quick to make because you don't have to sculpt you know a clay and cast that secondary you know that that negative mold two-part mold and you don't have to mess with that and all the plaster and everything it's just sculpt it paint let it dry paint it you're ready to go um, that is a very good thing about it second thing it is very cheap I think that the stuff that I got was only about five bucks when I bought it, but I think it's went down in price to about four bucks now. Um, and I didn't even really have to use the whole thing. Um, I used more than I needed to because I messed up the first time. But other than that, I mean, it's, it was real cheap to make. Um, cheaper than to make a latex mask. Um, and 
you know, you can actually get a pretty a good amount of detail. If you spend just a little bit more time with it and smoothing it out and everything, you could probably get a heck of a lot more detail than what I was able to get with this. This is my first time really even messing with this type of stuff. I have seen some people do some really amazing uh, stuff with this, you know, uh, with this air dry foam clay. So, I mean, you know, so yeah, you, you really get some good details. Now, the downsides to this is, is that one, it is not necessarily the most comfortable thing to wear. It is foam. It's not very breathable, so it can get hot. Uh, two, once again, it is foam. It's not very flexible. So if it doesn't really fit very well to your head, um, it can get, it could tear. You could potentially tear it and everything. In fact, it tore right there. Now, um, I could always go back and fix it. I could super glue it. I could take some more foam clay and cover it up like I've done a few times where it did tear while I was taking it off of my head mold. Um, but I think that some of those problems you could fix, you know, if you just plan ahead and know that, you know, this is a downside to this. Second, uh, or the third, it's, even though you could probably get a lot of details, I don't think you can get as much detail into this as you probably could if you went ahead and did a clay sculpture and they took a negative mold. Um, I mean, I really don't know how much detail you could probably get into this. Um, but I know that you could, but um, this is about as best detail as I was able to get this first time around. You could probably, your results may vary. Um, you know, so, and once again, because it's foam, because it could tear, because that's very flexible, Taking this on and off a few times, it's it's going to eventually tear. I mean, and you're probably going to end up having to throw it away or make another one or what have you. So it's so you know, except for a piece that you want to hang up and maybe just wear just a few times, it's not going to be a long lasting, um, you know, mask. So let me know what y'all probably think. Do y'all like it? Do y'all? Is this something that y'all are willing to try? Is this, do y'all notice anything that I did that I could improve better? Please let me know. Um, would y'all like to see me try something like this again? Maybe with a little bit of a different take on, on it, um, on the mask making process, not necessarily the character itself, but um, said, let me know. But until then, I just want to say, my name is Daniel, aka Bell Dan. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.